the price of gas, a.k.a. petrol, a.k.a. car cocaine. <laughs> there are a few commodities out there that affect the cost of living more than gas. You know, it's how we get to work. It's how we ship products across the country. And it's how we let our ex know that we busted them cheating. <laughs> now, I don't need to tell you that over the past few months, the price of gas has been climbing faster than your grandpa's heart rate on Viagra. In fact, gas is so expensive, instead of champagne, ballers have started ordering canisters of premium at the club. <laughs> yeah, it was like, bing, 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 bing. <laughs> that club was really lit. And as the national average in America hits $5 a gallon for the first time ever, people all over the country are doing whatever they can to stretch a tank as far as they can. For a nation that feels like it's stuck right now in gas gridlock, many drivers aren't sitting idle with soaring costs. They're getting creative. And my salary hasn't changed, so I carpool with my sister to work. Uh, one week she drives and the one week I drive. I just bought the motorcycle because now for 20 bucks, I use like for three days to four days. It saves me a lot. At a time gas prices are so high, bike sales are exploding. I've moved to the city, I don't need my car, um, can't afford gas. And even Google Maps is your friend with an option to navigate based on fewer hills and traffic. Even police departments are under strain. This Michigan Sheriff's Office is feeling the pain at the pump as well, according to its Facebook post, and has advised deputies to manage non-urgent calls over the phone. Well, well, well. I guess Joe Biden did end up defunding the police, yes. <laughs> the secret was just defunding everyone at the same time so we didn't notice. I see you, Joe, very slick. <laughs> but yeah, gas prices are so high, even police have to do their jobs over the phone, which you gotta admit is gonna be tough for some cops, you know? It's just gonna be like, all right, sir, are you black? Okay, then I'm gonna have to ask you to whoop your own ass a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just frisk yourself for no reason, just to be safe. You know who's actually gonna be hit the hardest by this, right? It's the Karens. <laughs> yeah, because they're the main people calling the cops with non-urgent shit. They're like, hello, police. There's a black man at the grocery store buying Trix cereal, which is illegal because Trix are for kids. Hurry, <laughs> hurry quickly. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> All over the country, Americans are doing anything they can to save on gas, carpooling switching to motorcycles. Shit, I pretended to be sick this morning just to get a free ambulance ride to work. <laughs> <coughs> oh, it's definitely AIDS, monkey pox, Ebola. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't think I'm gonna make it. I, I don't know how much longer I have. Oh wait, that, that's my office. You guys can put, you can drop me off here. Yeah, I, I'm gonna pull through, I'm gonna pull through. You guys can pull over here, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good, I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, bye-bye, bye-bye. <laughs> You know, for real though, it's, it's actually times like this that a lot of people are glad they live in New York City because you don't need to pay for gas here, right? You can walk, you can ride a bike, you can take the subway, and then with all that money that you've saved not buying gas, you can afford a room the size of a coffin. Yeah. <laughs> in New York, concrete jungle where you have 10 roommates, there's no space for any of you. That was a verse they cut out of the song. <laughs> but it goes to show you how desperate times are. America will do anything to save on gas right now. I mean, not investing in mass transit, obviously, but anything else, <laughs> anything else. And that means we're gonna have to move on because unfortunately, gas prices aren't the only problem affecting American people right now. And yes, I'm talking about guns. The never ending problem that America just can't seem to solve. Which, now that I think about it, maybe America like, shouldn't keep hitting the same brick wall. Maybe America can just use some of its problems to solve some of its other problems. You know? Yeah, like, like maybe the price of gas will get so high that mass shooters won't be able to drive to a gun store to buy weapons in the first place. You don't need red flag laws if gas is $40 a gallon. But until that happens, lawmakers in Congress are trying to find any measure that can help reduce the amount of guns that end up in the hands of madmen. And yesterday, the House took action. A major legislative package on new gun measures is headed to the Senate after passing in the House yesterday. By a 223 to 204 vote, lawmakers approved the Protecting Our Kids Act. The legislation is a collection of six new gun safety measures, including raising the minimum age to buy semi-automatic rifles from 18 to 21 and requiring that all firearms 
be traceable. Five Republicans joined Democrats and also supported the bill. It is, however, unlikely to pass in the Senate, where control is evenly split. One Republican congressman who voted against the bill, Congressman Steve Scalise, explained his opposition to new gun control laws. I go back to September 11th. Airplanes were used that day as the weapon to kill thousands of people and to inflict terror on our country. There wasn't a conversation about banning airplanes. Wow. Wow, that is a good point. I can't think of any way flying changed after 9-11. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get to the airport 15 hours early so the TSA has time to run a background check on my shampoo to see if it has any links to ISIS. <laughs> this is a terrible comparison. Nobody's trying to ban all guns. They're trying to add small measures to make people more safe, which is exactly what happened to air travel after 9-11. I mean, do you even remember what airport security was like before 9-11? You could basically walk onto a plane and just browse around like it was an Ikea. <laughs> yeah. You could just be like, no, I, I don't have a ticket. I just wanted to check out the cockpit. This is nice. This is, what does this do? Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> this is fun. All right, have a safe trip. <laughs> but this is the problem. You see, this is the problem that gun lovers have in America. There's nothing else that is as unregulated as they want guns to be. So their, their options and, the, like, the, the, the analogies they use always don't make sense. They're always like, cars kill people, too, but you don't regulate that... Wait, wait, actually, I mean, alcohol kills people, too, but they... Wait, actually, no, wait. Medicine kills people, too, but we don't regulate... Oh, no, wait, we do. Uh, let me think. Uh, guns kill people, but we don't regulate those, huh? See what I did? No, that's... I've gone back on myself. That's what I've done. <laughs> but despite... Despite these dumbass objections from people like Steve Scalise, the House still passed a gun control bill. The only problem is that everyone already knows that it has zero chance of passing in the Senate, which has got to be rough for the House. You know, you work so hard on something that you know is going to lose. You know, they're like the New York Knicks of legislation. <laughs> like, what a weird system in America where one chamber of Congress spends all its time passing legislation that they know the other chamber is going to shoot down. It's such a strange system, normal for America, crazy for most of the world. America is basically doing that thing that parents do with their kids, you know? You know those parents that aren't on the same page? Like, you ask your dad, Dad, can we eat ice cream for dinner? And he's like, yeah, sounds good to me, but you gotta ask your mom. And you know mom is gonna say no. <laughs> so I should have just asked her, why are you even a part of this process? <laughs> well, if I get your mom on the record saying no, then I can run ads against her next year, and then we can get a new, cooler mom, yeah. <laughs> but what's especially interesting to me is that as modest as this bill is, only five Republicans voted for it. Only five. And get this, four of them aren't running for re-election. Yeah, which is really interesting. You know, time and time again, you see, whenever Republicans aren't worried about pandering to Trump voters, all of a sudden, they make common-sense decisions. <laughs> and, and I'll be honest, this, this has shown me something that, like, maybe America needs to relook the process. Maybe people in Congress shouldn't get to be reelected. You just do one term and you're done. That's it. Yeah, because then America's politicians would finally care more about governing as opposed to getting reelected. You know, it's kind of like the same way people in relationships finally tell the truth when they're breaking up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, because the whole time you're worried about saving the relationship, but if you're not worried about that anymore, you become a lot more honest. Yeah, all of a sudden you're like, well, it's gonna end anyway, so I might as well tell you now that you fought like a beatboxing machine in your sleep, <laughs> Sarah, the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> this week, Los Angeles is hosting the Summit of the Americas, because contrary to popular belief, America isn't the only America in the world. <laughs> yeah, there are dozens of countries in North and South America, and every once in a while, they get together to discuss issues that affect the entire region, and then they bitch about Christopher Columbus. But... <laughs> For this year's summit, the person most countries are bitching about is Joseph Robinette Biden. Drama before the diplomacy officially begins this week in Los Angeles, where President Biden will be hosting the Summit of the Americas. There is a significant snub. The president of Mexico has announced that he is refusing to attend the summit because the U.S. is not inviting Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua over their lack of democratic values. But Mexico says the agenda of migration, economics, climate, and COVID is just too important to exclude any of the nations from this region. 
The White House counters that it believes that no dictator should be invited. Wait a second. Joe Biden has stopped a Mexican from coming to America? <laughs> you know wherever he is, Trump must be so pissed off right now. <laughs> He's like, Joe Biden is stealing my ideas. I'm the Mexican man. Mom! <laughs> But seriously, though, this is such a petty story. This is a meeting of the leaders of an entire hemisphere. But instead, they, they sound like middle school mean girls. You know, it's just like, hey, Mexico, I'm having a party, and you can come, but don't tell Cuba and Venezuela <laughs> and Nicaragua, because they're not invited. <laughs> it's like, oh, America, it's so brave that you think you're cool enough to even throw a party. <gasps> you bitch! Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> I will say this, I think we can all agree that Mexico is making a good point. America's stance on human rights violations seems a little inconsistent, right? Think about it. You won't even talk to Cuba and Nicaragua, but then you're gonna fly to Saudi Arabia and beg Prince Bonesaw to release more oil, huh? I mean, it seems like America's a lot more tolerant of countries that have a little uh, cha-ching. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, in many ways, the American government is like a stripper. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's like, if you ain't paying, they don't care about you. <laughs> and I hope you know that, Saudi Arabia. America's not actually into you. They're just saving up for college. That's all this is. <laughs> it's not about you, America. It's a transaction. Here's the thing, here's the thing. Whether the U.S. likes it or not, it is connected to these countries, right? They affect the United States, and the United States affects them. Don't you think it's weird that you're gonna be talking about migrants from Nicaragua, but then Nicaragua is not gonna be at that summit? You don't think it's strange? It's gonna be like staging an intervention without the person there. <laughs> You've gotta get your life together, Barry, is what I would say if Barry was here. I think this would've been good, guys. <laughs> this would've gotten through to him. It really would've been great. Where is Barry, by the way? What, drunk again? Oh, <laughs> well, we tried. <laughs> All right, that's it for the headlines. But before we go, let's check in on the traffic with our very own Roy Wood Jr., everybody! <laughs> Nice. Oh, hey, what's up, man? What's, what's happening, man? What's happening in the traffic? I'm just looking, man. Ain't nothing happening. Ain't nobody out there. The gas costs too damn much. Everybody at home. Ain't nobody on these roads today, man. It's looking pretty, looking pretty good out there. You know, I'll be honest, man. With this, these gas prices, man, I kind of, it's got me kind of rooting for monkeypox. Sorry, what? How was traffic during the last shutdown? It was good, wasn't it? It was good. The last pandemic, there wasn't no traffic. So bring back another pandemic, boom, traffic fixed, problem solved. I'm that telling you, man, the, the gas prices are getting out of hand. Like, I, like, I kind of like the fact, though, that the police can't respond to every call. That's cool for now, but then when the emergency start, really start piling up, then it's gonna be bad, man. Eventually, the police gonna have to start carpooling with the fire department and the ambulance. <laughs> They're gonna have to ride together. Like, the only way they're gonna come save you is if all three things are happening to you at the same time. <laughs> like, if you get shot, you gotta set something on fire. Then they'll show up. <laughs> they're gonna have to combine their vehicles. <laughs> it's gonna get bad. They're gonna have to come check on you in a fire truck ambulance cruiser. A fire truck. <laughs> yeah, a fire truck, ambulance, cru cruiser. That's what all three, police cruiser, ambulance, fire truck. All, all yeah, combined. Yeah, well, thank it's, you. It's, it's in, it was in Boys in the What's hood. happening yeah. in the traffic, Roy? <laughs> it's just, it's just people going to, to, to errands. People <laughs> are just going to and fro, man. It's just, it's a beautiful thing, man. It's just, <laughs> real quick about the, 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 the gun law stuff, the gun, whatever they're trying to pass. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the gun safety, yeah. That's part of it, all right? Can we, not act like that's the only solution to gun violence is gun, regulating guns. That, that's, that's gun a, good... a lot of different things contribute to gun violence I in agree. this country. I agree, you, you start with the guns, but then you look at communities, you, you look at schooling, you look at uh, eradicating poverty. I hear what you're saying, right? I don't talk about that, I'm talking about lonely white dudes. I, I'm talking about, <laughs> we gotta have legislation like, every lonely white dude got to have a friend. We got to legislate <laughs> friends for lonely white men. And I think that's how we get, that's how we fix some of it. Like, like it'd be like jury duty. Like, you think you gotta, you think you like, get to go out this week, but then you get a letter in the mail, like, report to Gary's basement. And you gotta, 
be Gary's friend for a little while, because them, them, them lonely white men ain't got no friends, man. That's so we don't let the lonely white men not have a friend, is what... what okay, but then... But then you what give them a friend. Every lonely white dude gets a friend. Yeah, yeah, I understand Rotating that. group of friends. Yeah, yeah, but then, but then what if they put a lonely white man with another lonely white man? Then isn't that double dangerous? No, that's called a militia. That's safer <laughs> than a lonely white man. A militia is much safer than a lonely... White man militia got a uniform, they got a website, they got a schedule, they get permits, they let you know when they gonna show up. Who would you rather deal with, a militia or a lone wolf? Militia. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what we need. We yeah. need that. The structure. Yeah, because we gotta do, somebody gotta talk to these white, white dudes in person. We tried talking to them over the internet, but Reddit didn't work. It was a big failure. So... Okay, well, um, let's get the traffic, Roy. We... It's just so beautiful when you just stare. All right, let's get to it. We got time. No, we, we, got we ran time. out of time again, Corey. We, we got out... time? Yeah, we, we... Just, let me just... No, we, we had the, we had just the time. Just let, let me, just real quick. Okay, okay what are you gonna say? <laughs> it's just so, that guy's gonna have a wreck. He was going you way too fast. Thank you so much, Roy Wood Jr., everybody.